this the training now. I will start with an introduction. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone that is joining us this morning. Good morning from wherever you are joining us from. Today is the third in the series of the PDF Bridge Capacity Building Training. And today, the topic we will be treating is raising export finance, raising finance for export. That is what we're treating this morning. This has been brought to you by the Trade Policy Work Stream of the Policy Development Facility Bridge Program, supported by the UK Aid. This morning, our trainer, is none other than Bamidele Ayemibo. Bamidele is the lead consultant at Treaty Impact Trade Academy. He's called the Export King, and probably you've seen him on several flyers doing what he knows how to do best in different areas. And this is beautiful. Bamidele, we really welcome you this morning. Bamidele has numerous trade certifications. He's the first certified specialist in demand guarantee in Nigeria, and among the first 10 in Africa. He holds a master's in international business with law from Southwood University, Manchester, United Kingdom, and PhD student in international marketing with the LIGS University of Hawaii, United States of America. He conceived, designed, and facilitates the training of the first export diploma program and six trade professional development programs in Africa in conjunction with the American Institute of Extended Studies. From Delhi started the first international trade center in Nigeria, where bankers, importers, and exporters come for open training programs and tutorials on different trade finance examinations. He's an avid blogger who regularly posts export-related information on www.tradeinfo.ng.com. He regularly facilitates international trade finance-related trainings for the Fidelity Bank, Central Bank of Nigeria, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, First Bank PLC, FCMB. Wemmer Bank, Heritage Bank, Echo Bank, to mention a few. Now, looking at this profile, you know that there's no better person to take this topic, raising finance for export, than the export king himself, Bamidele Ayemibo. Over to you, Bamidele, for your session. Good morning. We welcome you all at uh, Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, we'll be discussing a very, very vital and important topic this morning, and that having to do with the issue of financing. Uh, financing is a very big challenge for a number of um, exporters in Nigeria, uh, and sincerely, that has been the bane of the uh, inability of non-oil exports in Nigeria to grow, actually. That has been the bane. That has been one of the reasons why it's not been able to grow, and the reason mainly because a number of banks have had bad experiences in the past. So as a result of that, they really are not very much interested in financing uh, export. You know, I, I did a training for a bank about two, week, two months ago in August. And one of the direct, deputy directors, deputy mining director in that bank made a statement that really drove home this point. He said, we were beaten by snake. And now, whenever we see earthworm, we run away. And we're saying that because they had bad experiences in the past regarding export financing in Nigeria, now there are other tra transactions that are not really very bad, only to do some more thinking and structure to be able to ensure it's secured, but they just run away completely because of that bad experience. And that's a big challenge, and which is why one of the focus of this objective, rather, of this training is to begin to let exporters or intending exporters see alternative means of raising financing for their project. Alternative means of raising financing for their project. So that you won't have to wait for bank endlessly, uh, but you look for other way of raising financing for their project. So I'm looking at the preamble, the planning, the principles, in financing the payment and my proposal. By proposal, I mean the options, particularly the alternative source of raising financing, particularly the alternative source. But let me read this particular write-up. I saw it on a platform, and I thought it necessary. Just driving home the point, 
as regards the issue of why Nigeria must export, but more importantly, finance exporter. It was tied to the collapse of Nigerian economy in, is in our hands and why one dollar is 480. I think it's going down now. By the time the writer wrote this particular piece, he was already getting to 480, but at least it's coming down a little bit now. We shouldn't be surprised. We were far more productive in 1980 than we are today. In 1980, here are the key metrics 40 years ago. 40 years ago. We are a net exporter of refined petroleum products. Today, we import all our refined petroleum products. We ride in locally assembled cars in those days, buses, trucks, Pojo, Pojo car in Kaduna, Volkswagen in Lagos, Leland in Ibadan, Anamco in Enugu, all produce buses and trucks, steer in Bauchi, producing agricultural tractor. And it is not just assembly. We were producing many of the components in Nigeria. Vono product in Lagos, producing the seat. Exile in Ibadan, producing the battery. Not just for Nigeria, but for the entire West Africa. ISO glass and TSG in Ibadan, producing the windshield. Ferrodo in Ibadan, producing the brake pad and disc. Tires produced by Dunlop in Lagos, Michelin in Podakot. And I mean tires produced from rubber plantation in River State. We were listening to radio and watching TV set assembled by Sanyo in Ibadan. We were using refrigerators, freezers, air conditioner produced by Tamoko. We were wearing clothes produced from UNTL textile mill in Kaduna, Chalaram in Lagos. Not from imported cotton, but from cotton grown in Nigeria. Our water were running through pipes produced by Quali Pipe in Kano. Our toilets were fitted with WC produced at Kano and Nabeokuta. We were cooking with LPG gas stored inside gas cylinders produced at NGC factory in Ibadan. Our electricity was flowing through cables produced by Nigerian wire and cable, Ibadan, and then carbon metal in Lagos and Podakot. We had Bata and Leonard producing the shoes we were wearing, not from imported leather, but from leather that were locally produced and tanned in Kaduna. We were mainly flying our airways, the Nigerian airways, to most places in the world. The airways was about the biggest in Africa at that time. Most of the food we eat were being grown and produced in Nigeria. We are producing all this in 1980. Now, two things we should be learning from here. When we think of export, we should think of value addition. We should think of value addition and also realize the fact that, look, whatever we are thinking Nigeria is today, you know, some people don't believe Nigeria can produce this. Some things the people just don't believe Nigeria can produce, even though we're producing it in 1980. That means we can do it again. Now, in doing it, you definitely need financing. And that's why the focus, our focus today is going to be around financing. It's going to be around financing. COVID has engulfed the world. COVID has dealt seriously with the world. The prediction of WTO is that trade is likely to be reduced between 13 and 32%. Last year, it was about $18.89 trillion. So a reduction of 13% to 32% is a significant one. And if you check the last data of National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria is already having its own share of that. All the indices show all the data nose diving. So we don't need, we need financing much more than ever before to be able to get back on track. However, we must also begin to have a rethink on how we are sourcing our financing. We must become more creative in sourcing financing. And I strongly believe that if you really do what we will be talking about today and you're very open and transparent, you should be able to raise money through other sources and not necessarily through the banks. Banks is the regular one, but there are a lot of other options that some of them are probably aware of Probably we have not thought of it, or we have not even attempted to go in that direction. COVID made oil price to go below zero, unprecedented. 
April 20, 2020, oil price went below zero. I have to screenshot this, kept it for history's sake. The implication of this, this was a, as a result of the fact that, you see those red dots? Those red dots are telling us of the reason why this issue happened. That's the essence of those red dots. The reason why this happened. Why did this happen? This happened because oil, I mean, the vessels carrying oil across the world could not birth. There were no buyers. And because there were no buyers, what happened? You see the vessels becoming storex. <laughs> to sell the item, this was very much unprecedented. This was very much unprecedented in history. But it happened all the same. And a big lesson for us. This is painting attention to the fact that if this has continued for a long time, I don't know how we will have survived. But more importantly, the, the most obvious one about the fact that oil will soon become useless, at least reasonably useless in the world economy, to the extent that many developed countries, who are major buyers, who are major buyers, because you need to understand the fact that the world trade being 88.89 80, trillion dollars at last year, Africa is doing less than one trillion. The whole of Africa altogether, less than one trillion. So the people buying this thing are not in Africa. The people buying it are in Europe, are in America, are in Asia. Maybe AFCFTA will now help us to do more trade among ourselves and grow our own uh, volume. But if I'm going to really trade, we're going to be trading more in doing the volume with people outside Africa on oil. On oil. CBN has been the major, major support for the I and E window where Forex is being traded. All the official windows, CBN is the major source. There's supposed to be other sources. You know, typically in Nigeria, we get our foreign exchange from uh, foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, even though those ones don't stay, they come and go. Then remittance from our brothers and sisters abroad and the export proceeds. But do you know what? Out of all these sorts of Forex, our, the only source we have control over, that we decide we want to end Forex and we end Forex, is through export proceeds. That is the only source we have control over. That is the only source we have control over. And that is the source we probably are not taking very, very, very seriously. That is the source we probably are not taking very, very, very seriously. So financing and making that source very viable become very, very important for every one of us. COVID also has made obvious to us sectors that are of interest, or rather, sectors that should be of interest. Sectors that are of interest, or rather, sectors that should be of interest. Medical supplies and services, food processing and retail, personal and healthcare, ICT, e-commerce, agri are the major winners in this challenge the world is facing. Tourism, leisure, aviation, maritime, automobile, construction, real estate, manufacturing of non-essentials, financial service and education are the potential loser. If the financial service and education are moving into the gainers by leveraging on technology. That's why we can have this conversation. This is more like an educational program. And we are having this session because we are leveraging on technology. We are leveraging on technology. So in raising finance, what should be our interest? What should be of interest to us in raising finance? What should, be, um, what should we consider? The challenge of financing starts with application. With application. With application. If the loan application is defective and faulty, it becomes very difficult to get the financing. Either you are applying to an individual, you are applying to a company, whoever it is that you are applying to, the information contained in the application 
should not leave whoever it is that you are given the financing to, or that you are requesting the financing from, should not leave him in doubt. You should not leave him in doubt as to your capacity to handle the transaction. That means, for example, if you will need about 10 million, and you're asking for 7 million, but in this calculation of the financier, I discovered that this project will be executed with 10 million, but you have not told him you have 3 million to add. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You want to do a project of 10 million, and you want the bank to bear all the cost. You don't want to put anything in. It doesn't make sense. Your cost element must be clear to you and should be able to know what exactly am the cost I'm going to incur in this project. Those costs must be very, very clear. You know, sometimes people make requests for financing, but sincerely, the financier is practically correcting them on some of the issues. So by the time I've not been able to demonstrate my competence, to the financier, I then make the financier begin to doubt my capability to be able to handle that transaction. Also the tenor, the tenor. Sometimes people ask for, you go to a bank, you're asking for a shorter tenor to pay less interest, but when they check your antecedent, you know, when a bank asks you for a document, you need to understand the implication of that document. When they ask you for documents, that document they are asking for speaks a lot to them about your previous transaction. In fact, with the document, I know how your previous transaction went, the timeline you use, the duration and everything. I have an idea. I have an idea based on, I have an idea based on when you start, when you end, and when I know when you start, when you end, I can predict the duration of that transaction. So when there are disparity between what you are telling them and what they are seeing, that becomes a major, major challenge. So be mindful of the application. Document is key to showing credibility. The application should be supported by document. The application should be supported by documents. The application should be supported by documents. Last week, I mean, last session, about two weeks ago, we learned about documents. Sister Kola Awe dealt with the document issue very well. Out of those documents he mentioned, your contract, your bill of lading, your invoice, your inspection report, your NXP, and even account statement, all are sending information to the buyer. So when you are presenting a proposal, a request for financing from a financier, particularly an institution like a bank, supporting it with documents like purchase order. Purchase order shows that you have a buyer who have signed an agreement. So that means there is a firm undertaking to take all these goods from you. There is a firm undertaking to take all this good from you. So we are not in doubt. We are not in doubt as to your capability to sell because someone has offered to buy. Someone has offered to buy. Purchase order. Bill of lading. Evidence you have done it before. And this should be in your name. It should be in your name. Evidence you have done it before. It should be in your name. That means if your company is ABC Limited, the shipper on that bill of lady is ABC Limited, showing that you were the one that shipment. Same on the purchase order. Invoice. Invoice is demonstrating the amount payable. Invoice is demonstrating the amount payable. Invoice is demonstrating the amount payable. So that gives us a sense of your volume. Bill of lading also gives us a sense of the number of containers of that shipment or the number of kg, if it's going by air, the number of kg in terms of weight of that shipment. Invoice is giving us the amount, the value, whereas Bill of lading is giving us the volume 
The invoice is giving us the value, the value. Inspection report is telling us the quality of your last shipment. So if you are shipping, for example, a commodity like sesame seed or a mineral, and the last shipment, your purity was, let's say your, um, let me use cashew nut where we have a, a reasonable gap. Let's say cashew nut where you have um, uh, the moisture. Typically some buyer want 8%, 9%, max 10%. So you, the last shipment you did was 10%. But this buyer is asking for 8%. You now have to explain to the financier how you intend to achieve the 8%. The idea basically is this. The quality of the goods you ship before demonstrate what you can do. Demonstrate what you can do. Demonstrate what you can do. Inspection report. Account statement. Account statement. Account statement. Account statement. Account statement show that when the money came back, the last shipment you did, when did the money come back? When? At what point did the money come back? The purchase order date of signing and the account statement date of inflow give us an idea of the transaction cycle. It gives us an idea of the transaction cycle and it tells us if you will be able to deliver as promised if you'll be able to deliver. Custom endorse NXP or clean certificate of inspection or single good declaration from custom. All that give us an idea. All that gives us an idea of, I mean, give us information rather about the fact that the last shipment you did, it was not a legal transaction. It was not an illegal transaction. It was not an illegal transaction. Then, Contribution, equity contribution show commitment. Equity contribution show commitment. Equity contribution. Equity contribution is saying, how much are you contributing? If this transaction is costing 10 million, how much of your money will go in? <laughs> how much of your own money is going in? If your money is not going in, why should we? Why should we put our money? If your money is called having a skin in the game, it's called having a skin in the game. If you don't have a skin in the game, why should we consider investing in you? How are we sure that at the end of the day, you will not disappear when there are issues? You know, when your money is involved, when there are issues, the chance that you will, you will stay is high and see to the end of a transaction because your money is there. So the mindset of a financier, particularly bank, is that if you have a contribution to financing this project, most likely, most likely, you will see to the success of the project. Most likely, you will see to the success of the project. So that means you must have a skin in the game. How much are you willing to contribute? That this is a very, very fundamental principle that a bank will not, this must be in your planning. I think it's something that a bank cannot do without. You must contribute your own quota. That must be something from you in this transaction. Equity contribution shows your commitment. Then the purchase order itself, the purchase order itself, the purchase order itself, Gave some information. Look at the information you can get from purchase order. Number one, premise. Purchase order gives us the basis for asking for facility. Number two, preparation. Purchase order let us know the level of preparation required. Number three, planning. Purchase order help us to know what kind of plan you have to put in place, particularly as far as logistics is concerned. Purchase order give us an idea of payment. Payment involved. Who is paying? At what time is it paid? How is it going to pay? Payment. Purchase order tell us about pricing. 
pricing. At what price? At what price are we going to be selling? It tells us about pricing. And the incotent for pricing. Pricing. But also that tell us about packaging. How is it good to be packaged? And it also informs the bank how the loan will be packaged. Packaging. Packaging. But just that tells us the degree of protection the bank have. Because it will give us the incotents. It will give us the incotents, international commercial terms. And international commercial terms separate transaction costs and risk between the buyer and the seller. International commercial terms separate transaction costs and risk between the buyer and the seller. So it tells us about the incotents. 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 Also, the paperwork, like you learned the last time, pre and post export documentation. Pre and post export documentation, including the exchange control document and the shipping document. Someone said, are contracts and PO the same? They are used interchangeably. But in this conversation, they are the same. They are used interchangeably. Some people call it purchase order. Some people call it sale purchase agreement. Some people call it sales buyer sellers contract. Different name. But basically, an agreement between buyers and sellers. Someone said, how is it possible for exporter to assess financial loan after securing purchase order from buyer? That is exactly what we are talking about. So. Um, we're already answering that question. How, what you should do to be able to secure that loan when you have a purchase order. That's exactly what we're talking about. And we're saying having a purchase order means a lot. When a bank looks at it, it speaks a lot. Like payment. The bank is asking, how will the payment be made? Is there any guarantee for the payment? So the contract speaks a lot. The contract will determine if you are going to be funded or not. But there are other things involved also. Paperwork. Problem. Contract give us an idea of the likely problem we'll face in that transaction. 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 Product. Product. Like if under the, uh, uh, if I'm shipping by air, I know the challenge of air. If I'm shipping by sea, I know the challenge of sea. Then the product, the product also, you know, each product have their own peculiarity in terms of how handling post average analysts are Greek in terms of quality specification. Quality specification. Just stick for export readiness to approach a financier, be it bank or not. For financing, you must have a product that you want to sell. You must have a purchase order from a buyer that wants to buy. You must present a good proposal to the bank. You must have the payment terms that is secured or you are finding a way to secure. You must have partners, both local and abroad, to ensure the transaction is successful. Then previous business. You must show evidence. You have done it before. More importantly, purchasing power. Purchasing power. How much of your own money is going in? Just stick for export readiness. Another thing is overseas representative. You know, I do a lot of export projects. And one thing we ensure for every export project is to have an overseas representative. Why? Overseas representative ensures there is always a buyer and ensures when payment is due, we have option. So sometimes when we are doing shipment, we already we have agreement with one buyer, but we have two, three other buyers that can take it up if the buyer He's not going to pay us at when due because sometimes it's not letter. In fact, when you have overseas representative, you might not necessarily be emphasizing letter of credit. When you have overseas representative, you might not necessarily be emphasizing letter of credit. When you don't have overseas representative, letter of credit might become inevitable. When you don't have overseas representative, letter of credit might become inevitable. When you don't have overseas representative, Letter of credit might become inevitable. It might become inevitable. So, a representative can be in form of an agent. It can be in form of a distributor. It can be in form of a partner. You can even register a business in that country. 
You can partner with another business in that country. All these are factors that ensure that the payment is secured. Principles. Principle that should guide you in financing or the principle that guides the financier. What the financier look at? Number one, character and competence. Character and competence or capacity. Character is the willingness to pay. Capacity is the ability to pay. So when you go to a bank, the bank is looking at two things, character and capacity. Capacity sometimes can be cash flow. Willingness to pay, ability to pay. Willingness to pay, ability to pay. Willingness to pay, ability to pay. Character and capacity. These are very germane and important principles that are so critical to the success of your transaction. Character and capacity. Character and capacity. How do you demonstrate this document? Previous transaction. Account statement. All this together shows the financier, your character, and your capacity. Sometimes they can check you out with the credit bureau. Credit bureau. If you have a loan with a bank and you're not paying, you're not giving yourself a good name. Someone is checking you out behind the scene. Credit bureau. You have a credit card and you thought it was free money and then you are not paying. And some Nigerians, it's just amazing. People just took credit card and refused to pay. Some of them have gone to Canada. <laughs> Can you imagine? Those things are record against you. People are going to check. Vivian has made that easy now. Your character in payment of bills or paying a loan and then your capacity. Every bank is looking at that and checking out. Does he have character? Does he have capacity? History. 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 History is so important, ladies and gentlemen. Even though I'm of the opinion that a bank should finance a company who is new, who is new to export, but not new to doing business. Although a number of banks are going to mainly consider, <laughs> are going to mainly consider the issue of the fact that you have done it before. But I tell them when I'm in training with them that look, expert is like building. If you have finance building project before, you know what happened at every stage. You can prevent the customer from assessing the money because the money goes straight to people that will do the job. You can actually, given other conditions being met, fund a first-timer in export, but not a first-timer in doing business. But the bank wants to know your history. Has it done it before? How do we know he has done it before? What are the evidence to show that he has done it before? History. History. This is why your document, you can't throw it away because history is largely determined by your document, actually. History is likely defined by a document, actually. History is likely defined by your documentation. I started exporting 2008, but I left bank 2010. From 2010 till date, I'm sure I can get up to 90% of document of all the shipment I've ever done. 90%. Both the pre and post export documentation. Because I understand the importance of documents. You know, recently I was doing a training for an organization and I, I was using a document of a shipment we do 
He could see our company name on it. He was commenting about it. Because more often than not, I mean, they also want to, whoever is talking to them to be a practitioner, to be able to show them risk and how to mitigate it. And I'll show him document of 2013 transaction. Document is so important. It's so, so, so important. It's so important. Doc, you, know, you know the beauty of document is that printed, you can't argue with printed pages. You can't argue with printed pages. It is what it is. So, it is what it is. So, and the beauty is that they are also verifiable. Especially with the agency that issued them or the organization that issued them, they are verifiable. Your history of previous shipment will be determined by your bill of lading record or your airway bill record if you are shipping by air. Your bill of lading record or your airway bill record if you are shipping by air. Your history of previous volume will be determined by the commercial invoice. Commercial invoice and bill of lading record. The volume. Frequency of shipment by your bill of lading record. How often you ship? Every shipment have an airway bill, a roadway bill, a bill of lading. Every shipment. Every shipment. History of previous payment method. Your contract will show us. If it's an LC, you need to provide the sample of the letter of credit you had before. History. History. History of previous payment terms. And then history of previous con sales contract. Sorry, history of previous buyer destination from sales contract. Where do you typically ship to? Are there political issues there? Are there economic issues there? Where do you typically ship to? History of previous buyers and destination. History of previous procurement strategy you adopted, your proposals, your application shows that. How are you going to procure? Are you manufacturing yourself? If yes, where is your factory? What's your capacity? What do you have on ground to get it done? If you have done it before, or if you are doing it yourself. If you are procuring, how are you procuring? Are you going to buy from farm gate? Are they going to bring it to your warehouse up country or to your warehouse in Lagos? Where is it that you're going to buy from? All those options have their own risk. All those options have their own risk. History of previous procurement strategies. History of previous transaction cycle. From sales contract to the receipt of export proceed in the estoders account. History of previous transaction cycle. History of previous transaction cycle. From sales contract to the receipt of export proceed. Remember, when you give the bank your sales contract for previous transaction and the account statement of the previous inflow, those two documents give us an idea of the transaction cycle. Those two documents give us an idea of the transaction cycle. History of previous transaction cycle. History of previous payment. If you have been dealing with this buyer, has he been paying? Okay, account statement, account statement to show us all the payment you have received from that buyer. All the payment you have received from that buyer. All the payment that you have received from that buyer. History is so critical. You know why? History demonstrates credibility. It shows your result. It gives comfort to whoever you are sourcing from, from either former lending from a commercial bank or from other sources that we'll be talking about later on. Jurisdiction affect the payment. Jurisdiction affect the payment. Where are you shipping to? Political risk, economic risk, Exchange rate risk, sovereign risk, transfer risk, jurisdiction of where you are shipping to is going to tell us if you are going to get paid. Though. <laughs> For example, if you are shipping to Venezuela, you must look for another bank in another country 
to give an additional undertaking. You must look for another bank in another country to give an additional undertaking. If you don't get another bank in another country to give additional undertaking, you might have issue getting payment from that country. Or we are shipping to Syria. Any country that have a political issue, economic issue, you must find a way to edge against the risk of shipping to that country. By the way, the Nexim Bank Export Credit Insurance insures you against political risk. Insures you against... So if you are selling to such country, you can procure a political risk coverage from Nexim Bank. You can procure a political risk coverage from Nexim Bank. I understand that particular uh, product was approved last week by the board. So political risk, economic risk, exchange rate risk. Exchange rate is a reality. Only that for some people, they've not experienced it. As a banker, I started that charcoal in 2008. When I started that charcoal in 2008, Euro, that was during the financial crisis that started from the US. Exchange rate for Euro was 210 when I shipped. When I was to be paid, exchange rate was 190. Today in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. It's actually higher than the usual 380 benchmark from the iron E window. But Exchange rate issue is a reality. Economic issue is a reality. Nigeria currently have economic risk. Anybody shipping to Nigeria right now will not get paid on time, even if he has a letter of credit guaranteed payment. Why? We don't have enough FX. So CBN is, is, is uh, rationing the foreign exchange. <laughs> Ration the foreign exchange. Then quality, quality control, quality control. Quality control. Quality control. One of the biggest challenge of Nigerian products for export is quality control. One of the biggest challenge of Nigerian product for export is quality control. Biggest challenge. And the reason is because as a people, we are not quality conscious. As a, it's cultural. It's cultural. We have grown with it. Before now, until ShopRite came into Nigeria and rejected our product, our people were not packaging their product well. But when ShopRite began to reject our product and began to import the product we can produce in Nigeria, our people wake up and we started... If you see some Nigerian packaging today, you wouldn't believe it was packaged in Nigeria. Same for the Content, not just the container, the content, the content, the content. I had a client that wanted to export yam, and he had to be measuring the yam with tape rule. Because the length, the circumference, and diameter are critical for export. Apart from the type, the taste, the color, the sand at the back, the air, the branches, no sand, no hair, no branches, no injury. But that's the what you see in the market. Nobody bothers about that. So since nobody, even, the, even our meat, our fish, you get to the market, you see the man using a, a knife to remove the flies. And people will buy it. Since people are buying like that, he doesn't have incentive to correct it. It has become cultural. So we took that into export and we are losing money massively. People will pour sniper into beans. All these quality issues. Those are the things. So the bank is interested. How do you intend to meet the quality? These are the quality specifications. Show us evidence you have been meeting it and now you will meet this one. Quality specification. Quality specification. Let's talk about payment. 
for financing to be given either by regular financier or otherwise, for financing to be given, for financing to be given either by regular financier or otherwise, everybody is interested. How are we going to get paid? How are we going to get paid? What is the mode of payment? The mode of payment in Ahina trade typically is about um, about five, although four are the commonly used one, but it's about five. Although four are the commonly used ones. The four commonly used ones are open account B for collection letter of credit and advance payment, but the bank payment obligation is not yet, it was it's about five years old or six years old, but it, it's not, the acceptance is low in the world right now. The acceptance is low in the world right now. And we are not using it in Nigeria anyway, so we won't talk much about it. But the payment method you are selecting should be based on relationship between the buyer and the seller, availability of facilities or working capital for the buyer or seller. If I'm going to tell someone to pay later, that means I have money to continue business. I have money to continue business now, such that when you pay later, I will not be out of business. I have a working capital. That's the only reason you tell someone to pay later. If you don't have working capital, then you can't tell them to pay later because you want money immediately because you need to continue doing business. Relationship between both parties, how much do you know them yourself? Then countries involved. Which country is involved? What's the nature of the country involved? What are the issues in the countries involved? What are the issues? Remember, political issue, economic issue, all these issues should be put into consideration in your financing activities. Now, this is called the risk ladder. In this risk ladder, you can see advanced payment. You are the seller as an exporter. Advanced payment is the most secure for you. That's the lowest risk. Open account is the highest risk. The, after advanced payment, the next one is letter of credit, also called documented credit, followed by bank payment obligation, followed by documentary collection, followed by open account. Followed by open account. Followed by open account. Let's take them one by one. I want you to look at the screen as you look at, as you do this. Let's take them one by one. Open account. Now, open account, CBN is not encouraging open account, even though people are still doing it. CBN is not encouraging it. CBN, and I understand why CBN is not encouraging it. I only have issue with the fact that CBN is discouraging a payment method because of the risk involved, even though that same payment method, over 85% of international trade in the world is done on open account, also called cash against documents. 85%. So when I tell you that trade in the world is about 18.9 trillion, let's say 19 trillion, over 85% of 19 trillion is done on open account. 85% of 19 trillion transaction is done on open account. Nigeria is doing 60 billion export, 55 billion import as of last year. Roughly about 120 billion. We are doing so minute trade in the world and we want to go away from the trade that everybody is using or everybody is used to. What am I saying in essence? We can't run away from what everybody is using. The question I often pose to CBN anytime I have opportunity is, instead of saying we don't want to do this, we should be asking the people doing it, if there are risks, how are they securing themselves? And that's the right question, because there are ways to secure yourself in open account transaction. For, for example, having a rep at destination is the way I have been able to secure myself in this kind of transaction. Having a rep at destination has been the way that I have been able to secure myself in this kind of transaction. Having a rep at destination. 
having a rep at destination. The rep ensure I have alternative buyers at any point in time. Such that if it's cash against document, we give document, we expect payment immediately. And that rep can also sue them or get a lawyer to sue them if need be. And they know it's in developed world, so you know you can't run away, you have to pay. Open account says, I ship the goods, send document, and export that go to the port, clear the goods, and pay later. And pay later. Open account. Bill for collection. There are two variants. There is site, there is tenant. If you think of bill for collection, think of open account involving bank. If you know open account or cash against document, that open account involving bank without obligation on the part of the bank is called documentary collection or bill for collection. So as well as ship the goods, send document to his bank. His bank send document to the importer's bank. Importer now release document to the importer. When they release document to the importer, collect money immediately. Importer can go to the port and collect the goods. Payment is then sent to the exporter's bank and the account of the exporter is credited. Documentary collection site. How about documentary collection tenant? Exporter ship the goods, send document to exporter's bank. Exporter's bank send document to importer's bank. Importer's bank release document to the importer. But before he release that document, he will have filled a bill of exchange and undertaking to pay. So as the document is released to the importer, importer sign an undertaking to pay. Then he can go to the port and clear the goods and pay later. This is better. And pay later. And pay later. Then we have what everybody wants, letter of credit. Letter of credit is an undertaking of the buyer's bank given to the exporter, giving assurance of payment when shipment is made and documents are presented that conform to the terms and conditions of letter of credit. When shipment is made and documents are presented that conform to the terms and conditions of a letter of credit. So before a letter of credit is done, before we even consider it at all, what do we do? The importer will provide a cover for his bank Provide a cover for his bank, not just provide the cover by loan or cash. He will fill the application form. The LC will be sent from the buyer abroad to the exporter's bank. It will be advised to the exporter because the exporter now have an instrument in his hand that give undertaking from a buyer's bank abroad, not the buyer, not the buyer, the buyer's bank abroad, which can be deemed to be credible. The exporter can ship the goods. Send document to his bank. His bank then send document to the importer's bank. Since importer's bank gave undertaking, the importer's bank pay immediately. Within five banking days, the importer's bank can also incur a defer payment undertaking if necessary, if that is the terms, to pay in future. And it will pay when payment is due. Document money is released to the exporter, document released to the importer, importer goes to the port and clear the goods. But imagine a situation where I'm shipping to a country. I'm shipping to a country where there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. There is no guarantee for payment because of issue in that country. Even though there is a bank that guarantee, but I'm not sure of that guarantee because there is a political risk, economic risk. What I would do is to look for another bank in another country to give additional undertaking. And that's what led to the concept of confirmed letter of credit. That's what led to the concept of confirmed letter of credit. So in a confirmed letter of credit situation, what do we have? The exporter, the importer will provide cover as usual. Having provided the cover, Fill the application form. 
you will notice now that in this confirm letter of credit, we are having three banks. We are having three banks. The export importer bank will move the money to the confirming bank. It will move the money to the confirming bank. Why is he moving the money to the confirming bank? The confirming bank is not in the business of taking unnecessary risk. So, until the confirming bank receives that money, which is an evidence that is covered through a loan or cash, then the LC is advised. So, this is a Nigerian bank. This is an exporter in Nigeria. This is a Nigerian bank. Exporters Bank. This is an importer's bank in, in Venezuela. This is Citibank in US. Citibank in US. So we have sorry, I'm a bit distracted. Did they, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm following the this thing we have. Um, Titi, don't worry. Um, so the importers bank. Let me just go over there again. So now we have the fund move to the confirming bank. So the confirming bank received the LC, advised the LC to the Exodus Bank. Exodus Bank received Exodus received the uh, confirm LC. Two bank are giving undertaking. So it's shipping the goods, send document, document go to the confirming bank, and confirming bank pay. Confirming bank pay as soon as we receive document and then send document to the importer's bank and the importer's bank can send document to the importer for the importer to clear the goods. Um, we are supposed to take a break now. I don't know if that's still necessary. Um, let me talk to the moderator. Hello, Titi, are you there? Yes, um, we don't need a break. I'm following my outline, let's, please, don't let's worry. Continue. Let's continue. Okay, there's no need for break. Yes, there's any comment. And I have just a quick announcement. Okay. If anyone has a question, please type it in the Q&A box, not the chat box. And when we're done, Bambele will take the questions one after the other. And I see some people are raising hands. We may not be able to call you to ask a question. So if you raise your hands and you have a question, also type it in the Q&A box. Thank you very much. Over to you, Bambele. All right. So since we're not having a break, let's just continue. Now, proposals. Proposals. By proposal, I mean, so what are the alternatives? I've spoken a lot about the principles and the planning and the payment method. So how do we ensure that we are able to source for fun through alternative means? Now, I do one directly, so I will do a case study of what I do so that you understand that it's what I do already, raising money for export transaction. And I will talk about some of my learning points that I feel you should put into consideration when you are trying to do that. Now, in sourcing for finance, please remember, money is a medium of exchange. That means, Anything you have that you can use to get what you want is money. Even though what you need for this project is cash. But let me tell you, the intangible money like competence, intangible money like character, intangible money like companion, relationship, intangible money like credibility are the ones that will attract the cash. The more the intangible money you have as a business, as an individual, the more you attract cash to yourself. I've raised different kinds of funds. But what we do is to leverage on this competence, character, companion, credibility, to give to give a
um, comfort to those we want to ask to invest. To those you want to ask to invest. So in sourcing for finance, before you approach anyone, ensure you have built competence that the person is aware of. Ensure you have built character that the person is aware of. Ensure you have built relationship that the person is aware of. Ensure you have built credibility. Credibility is consistency of result. Companion is consistency of relationship. Character is consistency of conduct. And competence is consistency of performance. The more the intangible money you have in life, the higher your chance of attracting tangible money that is cash. What I discover is that people focus on cash, they will destroy and relationship. They don't care about credibility. They don't even have competence, but they complain they are not able to raise money. So here are my proposal on alternative source of raising finance. Importers, cooperative, aggregated export, angel investor, venture capitalist. Importers, cooperative, aggregated export, angel investor, venture capitalist. Importers, why importers? You know, if you look at the data of export of last year, Major importers in Nigeria, major importers are private organizations. Private, major importers. They are individual companies. Major exporter is government. Even though the export of Nigeria was about $62 billion, 85% was oil and crude, crude oil and gas. Government. Private, remaining 15%. Invariably, just about nine to ten billion were just about nine to ten billion were funding of export from or proceed of export from private citizens. But when you look at the imports, over ninety percent or about ninety percent are mainly private organizations importing different things into Nigeria. What does that tell you? There are so much Naira chasing imports. There are very little Naira in the export space. We need to find a way to channel that money in the import space to the export space. How can this be done? Partnering with importers to invest in export. My question, why should an importer consider investment in export? because they are currently struggling sourcing for FX. And because this happened four years ago, and there are no plan in this country that it will not happen another four years down the line. That it will not happen another four years down the line. So any importer that is wise should have control of his foreign exchange. For example, I thought we do, a, I do export. Now, we have an academy for trade, um, for trade um, certifications, for banks, for importers, for exporters. But they pay us in Naira. But we have partners in UK and US that we need to remit to because they are the one coordinating those exams. And we need to pay them in Forex. So when the student paid in Naira, we use the Naira to export, generate Forex, and you need to pay. We use the Naira to export, generate Forex, and you need to pay. So, whether dollar is 500, or is 300, or is 200, I'm not bored that. You know why? Because I have control over the FX I need for my FX transactions. So if you're an import exporter, if you know importer, pitch with them. They have a loss of cash. They don't know what to do with it. They are looking for dollar. They can't find it. Here are you, you have a buyer, you have credible history, and you are looking for funding. Partner with importers. Partner with importers. 
That for me is one of the most viable way, number one, to grow import volume, number two, to solve the FS challenges of an average importer. So like I was saying earlier that in 2019, the total export done from Nigeria was about 62.5 billion, which was about, uh, out of which 10 billion is non-oil exports. Majority of importer in Nigeria and private sector, 55 billion. Scarcity of foreign exchange means that there are no much, there are so much Naira available to buy foreign exchange, and this can be deployed in the export sector to generate foreign exchange and also grow non oil export sector in Nigeria. There is therefore a need for secure collaboration between the um, importers in need of forex and exporters in need of capital. Between importer in need of forex and exporter in need of capital. This is very lucrative and innovative way of sourcing for foreign exchange financing by exporter outside the conventional banking system. Generally, an importer will go and do forward contract. He will go and do foreign currency futures or go for foreign currency option or maintain foreign currency account. But we are saying through the export of ideas, services and products, you can generate foreign exchange. So the trader who has transaction require payment for import of goods, the trader has fund to the tune of 40, 20 to 40% lower than the prevailing FX for the transaction. That trader assess uh, the situation, decide on the most preferred FX edging strategy. Depending on the selected option, negotiate a rate with an exporter on price, uh, sorry, uh, with an exporter, with the exporter on, on price, uh, with the exporter on price with the buyer abroad. Trader pay Naira to fund export projects or advance fund to an exporter ahead of receipt of proceed. Upon receipt of the export proceed from abroad, the account of a trader is credited at the agreed rate. Trader then can use the forest to fund his import transaction. The second one is cooperative. 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 Rather than being a lone ranger, form a cooperative or join an existing cooperative. Sell the idea to them in that cooperative and do it together. You already have the competence. You can do it already. They have money, but they want to. So because it's cooperative now, there is control over everything being done. Not just one man show. That control also helps everybody to be able to put their money down, and that makes it easier for you to raise money. Cooperative are people center enterprise, owned, control, or run by uh, and for members to realize their common economic goal or social and cultural need. Cooperative bring together in a democratic and equal way. The objective basically is to provide goods and services to members and enable them to attain increased income and savings investment, uh, productivity and purchasing power, and promote among them equitable distribution of the net surplus through maximum utilization of the economy of scale. Maximum utilization of the economy of scale. Cost sharing, risk sharing, without, however, conducting the affair of the cooperative for charitable purpose. In order to source for export financing, an exporter can join an existing cooperative, sell the vision to them, or form a new one. So don't let your vision die join existing cooperative or form a new cooperative form a new cooperative form a new cooperative aggregated export this is the one i do aggregating people together to be able to do export transaction aggregate people together to be able to do export transaction how does this work now, in this arrangement, even though it's similar to cooperative, this is similar to cooperative export program because it involves raising funds from different individuals and putting it together for the purpose of exportation. 
This anchor company initiate an export project and use it to create an investment program. And use it to create an investment program. In slots, like the one we do, we do a container slot, half container slot, a quarter container slot, or in blocks of investment that people can invest into. The targeted investor can then decide on how many slots they are willing to fund. The program is designed in such a way as to, uh, that an investor can invest a slot. Maybe you are doing 100 metric ton of an item. A slot can be 1 million per slot. And it can be for a particular period. One month, two month, three month, four month, five month, six month, 12 month, depending on what, what, you are, what the project, the cycle of the project. And also at a particular return on investment, like 20% of the capital. However, it differs from cooperative export because the people involved do not know themselves. That's the difference between this and cooperative. In cooperative, they know themselves, they talk. But in this, they don't know themselves. They just make the fund available. You can also call it crowdfunding if you like. You can call it crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. I mean, and some farmers of um, tech, uh, technology farm, I mean, you I call them farm tech now? <laughs> Since we have fintech or agri tech, I've been able to do this very well. A number of them have been able to do this very well. That they are doing something similar to this. So we can bring that into export so that you don't think you cannot realize your export dream just because you don't have the fund to be able to do it. What you need is to be able to, if you are transparent enough, if you are transparent enough, even when there are challenges or delays, even when there are challenges or delays, like for the project we did this year, now we have had delay because of COVID. But everybody know COVID had issues and whatever it is you are telling the people can be verified, can be verified. You know, because one of the biggest challenge in our country is trust is a big problem. Trust is a big problem. So because trust is a big problem, the more transparent you are, the more comfortable the client is. So people ask me very stupid questions and I answer them. Because I need the fund to do the project. So I need to answer their question because they're investors. In order to make aggregated export attractive to investors, here are the things you must be ready to do. Now, like I said, this is exactly similar to what I do. You must have, you must have a physical office location. So if they are looking for you, they should be able to find you. There must be a physical office location. So they can locate you anytime without notice. You must have verifiable history of previous successful shipment. If they so desire and they are interested, have you done it before? Can you show us evidence? You are able to demonstrate and show them evidence. Can you see where the document I talked about letter before now is? Can you see where it is? There must be a project brief. I don't know if I attach project brief here. Let me see. Uh, oh my God, I didn't attach the project brief. There must be a project brief. What do I mean by project brief? A summary of cost and um, cost analysis. A summary of cost and benefit analysis of the project. There must be a project brief. It's so important for you to have a project brief. It's so important. There must be a project brief that summarizes the timeline the product we are exporting, the amount, the quantity, the unit price. Do not have a project brief that they can read and have an idea of what we are doing. The project brief must state the total cost, duration, and return on investment on the project. There must be transparency in your dealings. Your yes is yes, your no is no. If you say this is the situation and it has changed, let them know it has changed. Let me tell you. Some people will not believe you, but ensure there are evidence so that if they so desire, like the project we are doing right now, we have guarantee. Some, because of the delay we have got of COVID, some clients did not believe that they know because Nigeria, I mean, so, but in, the person did not ask for guarantee since six months when he started. He just asked for it and I sent it to him and he could verify it. Even when we ship sometimes, for those that are in doubt, I will send them a copy of the bill of lading 
or screenshot of the vessel that came to pick it, they can track the vessel just to create some transparency, particularly for those in doubt. Some are not in doubt. So I have a lot of friends involved that are not in doubt. So they don't worry. I just send them reports and then let them know what's going on. But some are in doubt. And it's okay. I, I don't have issue when people are in doubt. You know why? Because there are, we have credibility issue in Nigeria. So because of that, I don't have issue with that. I will ensure I give them information that made them comfortable. You must be able to answer stupid questions from investor. I use the word stupid. Sometimes you might think it's irritating, but you know why you know their history. You know why they're asking the question they're asking. When you know their history, you know why they're asking the question they're asking. You must be ready to send periodic reports on the progress of the project. Periodic report. Periodic report. There must be a form of security or guarantee on the capital invested. What if things go wrong? How do we get this money back? So I would recommend what I use. I use what is called advanced payment guarantee. Now, if I tell a bank, a number of banks in Nigeria, that look, I want to raise 100 million naira for a project. And I said, I need you to give me an advanced payment guarantee. So, if, a, so if I want to do an export project and a client come, I, I, I will typically have a supplier that will do most of the bush work since I will be in Lagos to raise the money. Only handle the shipment in Lagos. That supplier is the one that will give cash to. He will go and get an advanced payment guarantee if he has history and he's talking to his bank and the bank knows he has history. The bank will give him what is called APG. That APG will be issued in my favor. So because of that APG, I can go to town. I can raise one billion naira if it's required. Why? A bank has guarantee we pay if this guy does not pay. Based on that, with that guarantee, I raise money. When I raise that money, I give it to the bank. The bank is the one that will give that money to the supplier. And the supplier can then use it to do what he needs to do. When he finishes using it to do what he needs to do, deliver the goods, confirm quality, then we do the shipment and expect payment. You must be ready. There must be an agreement, of course, an agreement signed by both parties, evidencing that transaction. You know, an interesting thing is I have clients, <laughs> I have clients that will give me tens of millions without signing the paper. <laughs> but those are clients, that is where credibility comes in and trust. They will sign any document tens of millions, and they won't sign any document. Why? Credibility. You know, as bad as Nigeria is, I've seen clients, I have fantastic clients that look, because over the years we've worked together, and they can see exactly what we are trying to do, and there is trust. Because they can see that, look, consistency over 10 years is a sign that we mean business about what we are trying to do. So you can get to that point that some people will not even sign, but it's good to document. I'm not saying you should not. I'm only saying that if you kind of, some people will just choose not to sign. You must be flexible enough to amend the agreement based on each investor record. We have a standard template. If, if some investor will come and say, no, change this one, change this one, change this one. Since I'm not going to run away with the money, I don't have any issue changing. As long as you won't tell me to increase the return or reduce the timeline. <laughs> Those are the two I, I, I don't have control over. But for most other things, we can. Why? There's a guarantee for the money. And we are doing a legitimate business. So I'm basically saying that your dream should not die because you don't have fund for your project. Sincerely, you can raise that fund. And I've just given you an example of what I've done. Angel investor. Angel investor is a person who wants, who invests in a new business venture, providing capital for startup or expansion. An angel investor are typically individuals who have spare cash and are looking for a higher rate of return than will be given in a traditional investment. Instead of going to bank and getting maybe 5%, 2%, 10%, they want to get a reasonable return over, of investment. Here is what angel investors are particularly care about. Quality, passion, commitment, and integrity of the founder of the business. Market opportunity being addressed and the potential of the company to become very big. A clearly thought out business plan, an early evidence of obtaining traction towards the plan, and appropriate valuation with reasonable terms. 
So what financial question should an entrepreneur anticipate from an angel investor? How much capital are you raising? How long will that capital last? What will be your monthly cost to be incurred? Do you have detailed financial projection for the next two years? What are the key assumptions underlying your projection? What key cost components are there for the product? What are the unit cost and profit of the item to be exported? And what are the likely gross margin? What are the likely gross margin? What are the likely gross margin? Then venture capitalist. Venture capitalist. A venture capitalist is a private equity investor that provides capital to company, exhibit high rate of potential in exchange for an equity stake. Venture capitalists want to be a part of your business. Angel investor is not necessarily going to be a part. But venture capitalists, they want, to be, they want to be on the board, actually. They want to be on the board. This could be funding startup ventures and supporting companies that wish to expand but do not have assets. A company called me on this recently. That company particularly is interested in funding women in export. If the women have fantastic business, they want to fund them. So they want to work with us to be able to help them review the transaction just to be sure. They are venture capitalists, but they will be on the board of that business. They will be on the board. So they will be part of the business, but they want to fund women exports. Venture capital firm obtain investment capital from pension fund, insurance company, welding investor, and the like. A team of analysts at the firm make the decision about which business to invest in, and they receive management fees, such as percentage of profit and the compensation of their scouting, analysis, and advising role. An investment from a venture capitalist is a form of equity financing. The VC investors supply funding in, in, in exchange for taking an equity position in the company. Equity financing is normally, equity financing is normally used by non-established business that are unable to use debt to finance the business, such as business loan from financial institutions. Insufficient cash flow, lack of collateral, high risk profile, and as some of the reasons why business may be unable to use debt to finance their business, but they can use equity through venture capitalists. Many, many new businesses have issues with this in this area. So there are downsides and to losing the ownership, some of the ownership of your business to VC. And, um, and VC may be a poor choice for entrepreneur who want to retain control over his business. In exchange for providing funding, venture capitalist firm may obtain majority voting rights, special veto rights, either through obtaining a majority of the shares or preferred class of shares. VC may also mandate priority rights for compensation in the case of share sales. However, there are some advantages to extending equity to venture capitalists beyond the cash projection. Many VCs are veteran business experts. For those with an exciting idea, but not much business experience, it can be beneficial to add expertise to the company in form of venture capital ownership. Venture capitalists typically invest in business for the long term. They will stick with a young business for years until it matures to the point that its equity share have value. Um, companies go public or it's, about, or, or, or it's bought out. These investors usually exit company at this point enjoying massive profit since they invest in the now public company when it was just fledging startup. So the idea basically is that they come in and they go out at some point. So you now, based on your objective as a business, can decide which of these you would like to do. As a round off, let me show you in the, this is an advert, okay, the case study. This is an advert showing the typical advert we put out when we want to raise money. So here is a project we did. We, we actually currently, funny you know, just started raising money for another investment, round of investment. And so look at this transaction. Benefit, run as per business while on the paid job because you can actually do it in your company if you are doing two containers. 100% payment received upon shipment, 100% cover on capital via bank guarantee, attractive return on investment, reasonable transaction cycle. We are exporting solid minerals, lead ingots, quality, uh, risk eliminated by buyers representative in Nigeria. Transaction cycle six months, return on investment 20% for six months. Outsource export operation 
you can invest as a company or as an individual. Payment is eliminated by advance payment before shipment. So this is just a typical example of the information we put out there as advert, and then people see it, and then they are willing to invest in it. To participate in exports, you can be an active exporter, you can be a passive exporter. As a passive exporter, export investor and export professional. Export professional, trade lawyers or trade brokers and the like. Active investor, active exporter, you can be a product investor or service, uh, product exporter or service exporter. As a product exporter, you can export manufactured goods and you can export to everyone that if you want to diversify our economy, if you, want to GDP, if you want to create employment, if you want to boost our foreign reserve, if you want to increase the value of Naira Visa, this other currency of the world, aggressive drive for non oil export is the way to go. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Brandile. Thank you so much for that. That has been a very powerful session, and that's about one and a half hours of talking. <laughs> so you need to take a cup of water here. Thank you. You need to you need to lubricate your tongue, okay? Because we'll be going to the Q&A. I think you can see the Q&A. You will take them one by one. Yes. And you can answer them live. I think if, if you know how to go about this. So right now there are 12 questions in here, so we can take them one by one. If there's any other after this, I will call your attention to them, all right? So over okay, to Okay, someone you. said, please, how can a startup assess fund from a bank, especially if the company is about to export for the first time. As a startup trying to export for the first time, you will not be able to get funds from a Nigerian bank. So consider the alternative I've spoken about. You will not be able to get money from a Nigerian bank as a startup, as a startup, as a startup. What, what about CAD, cash against document? How secure this transaction when buyer is dealing with CAD, CIF, it's not secured. The buyer can choose not to pay if it's fraudulent. So you must have a cover through a guarantee or standby letter of credit or a representative at destination or a representative. So if you don't have those three options and you have not dealt with this guy before and you don't have any record of Nigerian that you know that have dealt with him that you pay regularly, it's not wise to deal with him at all. It's not wise to deal with him at all. It's not wise to deal with him at all. Okay. Um, please, is there any plan for producing handout for all lessons we have taken? I don't think so. The video and presentation are typically online. Uh, at least I, I've, I saw the last one that was done. So you have access to the recorded version and the presentation online, actually. So I'm not sure there will be a printed uh, handout, but rather an online recording version. Jonathan Oladeji is asking a question. And he says, on payment, is there any risk getting payment from mainland China after exports using LC. Now, let me tell you about China with LC. You must ensure, you must ensure that there are no discrepancy. Discrepancy on an LC can be a way to delay your payment and convert it from LC to bills, particularly in China. So, but if you, your, your document does not have any discrepancy, then you will not have issue with getting payment. You will not have issue in getting payment. So what I mean discrepancy, you must be sure you have checked it against the LC. More importantly, let your bank check it. Let your bank check it. And be sure your bank know what it's doing. Be sure your bank know what it's doing. Some banks don't have competent staff on that desk to check it for you. They are just courier. They collect from you and send that bro. They don't check at all. So you have to check yourself or get someone to check for you. Uh, Afolabi or money. What is the transaction cycle difference in time between FOB and CIF? FOB and CIF transaction cycle. You know, they say. Unfortunately, we are not discussing in cotem. FOB and CIF are just in cotems. There is not. No, it doesn't have anything to do with transaction cycle at all. It has everything to do with the risk and cost 
Where does the risk and cost of the exporter ends? Where does that of the importer start? Where does the risk and cost of the exporter ends? Where does that of the importer start? So it doesn't have anything to do with cycle at all. The cycle of FOB and CIF will be the same. It will be the same. The only difference is when the risk and cost of the exporter ends. Please, I'm a woman who is an export. How can I get access to the capitalist? Okay, um, reach out to, to organizer. They will link you up with me, and I will link you up with them. Reach out to the organizer. They will link you up with me. I will link you up with them. Um, how do we get a representative? Brilliant question. Nigerians abroad. Nigerians abroad. My rep in China, my rep in UK, my rep in US, my rep in Dubai are all Nigerians. <laughs> all Nigerians. Nigerians abroad. Just work with Nigerians abroad. But they must have a stake. They will get, you have commission on the transaction so they can be, they have, it's, there's something in need for them. But Nigerians abroad. Work with Nigerians abroad. There are a lot of Nigerians abroad that are looking for business job to do. You know, Nigerians abroad looking for a job. Where they can partner with Nigerians at home and be a very good representative, earning income from many exporters. Out of I don't know why a lot of Nigerians are not thinking of this. Sincerely, uh, is it possible to be an exporter without borrow money from a bank? Or why not? Huh? Why? Not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? You can co cooperate. For example, you come together and use money without borrowing. Everybody put money together. Cooperate. Why is it? Why is it good to see a D tenor compared to the other one? Why is what CAD uh, Isaac Adelati? Please retype this question. Why is it good to see a D tenor compared to other ones? I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Please, can you retype that question, please? Olufumilayo Oyewale, can import invoices of former business? Be relevant as part of financial history in securing finance from bank. If you are doing import, yes. If you are doing export, no. If you are doing import, yes. If you are doing export, no. Rabiu Dogo, what can you say about partnering with Rebiru the change seller instead of importer? The same thing, the same thing, um, Rabiu, the same thing. Rebiru the change. If I, for me, I think they're even a lot better than importer, sincerely, because they have a lot of cash. Build the change. For me, in fact, look, build the change is even better because they sell dollar. They know how to sell dollar to importers. So build the change is a better option, actually. I just use importer in general, but build the change is, Rabbi, you are very, very correct. Build the change is a fantastic option. As a startup, what is the least one could invest in export business? It depends. It depends. It depends. If you are doing finished product, if you are doing commodity, you need to have some five to 10 million or more. But if you are doing finished product with less than two, three million, you should be fine. Caroline, I would please like to know if there is any cooperative for women in export. If not, if there is any, there are cooperative for men and women in export, preferably in Abuja. No, I would recommend you join MPNEN. Maybe later on, MPNEN can consider that. That's a network, that's a newly inaugurated network of practicing non oil exporter of Nigeria. Caroline, reach out to the organizer, they might be able to help. So I'm sure MPNEN will be considered um, the idea of having a, a uh, women in export. But there are, I'm sure there are bodies women in export, if you check also. I know there are women in service export. Well, women in export, I'm not sure, but you can check to confirm that. I would I would like to uh, I would like all the teachings I'm seeing here post via email format if possible. My question is how do one go about licensing both of our country and ISO plus plus other barcode paper needed as subsidiary rates are? Okay, you know what I would recommend? You know, this is why we must join a group. There is NASMI, there is NASI, there is NASIMA. These are groups that if you ask this question, they will tell you. Because some of them already have ISO certification. Some of them already, already have barcode. So I would recommend you join any of those national groups. National Association of SME, 
National Team of Chamber of Commerce, National Team of Small Degree Industrial. If you join any of those groups, I'm sure you can get that question answered. How about other financing options as factoring and forfeiting? No, I did discuss that. That's for if you are if you are if you are financing from bank, those are the options bank will consider for you. But we didn't talk about that because that's for bank to worry about. That's not for you to worry about. The, when, when you go to a bank for financing, they will decide if they are doing factoring or forfeiting. They will come out of that. So we didn't include that. We are more interested in actually the last part. The last part of that training is what we're interested in, actually. That's one of the major objectives. So that you can become many people already complain they can't get loan from bank. Can we begin to look elsewhere for financing, which is one of the major uh, objectives of this training. Apart from swing, how else can a rep a destination secure payment. Reporting to the authority. Reporting to the authority. Reporting to the authority in the country. I mean, reporting to police. <laughs> or no, you know what I discovered? There was a case in the US. The guy did not pay. He was giving stupid excuses. The partner I work with in the US wrote him a letter. When he saw the letter of a lawyer in that country, he negotiated payment straight and he started paying. Because that guy told him, he gave him number of days and he will sue him. He negotiated payment and started paying immediately. Sourcing for buyer, is this something you can help with? Yes, we can assist with that. We have a service to help with that. Aisha Suleiman, where can I get a venture capitalist? Google. Google is your friend. Google. Google is your friend. There are a number of them in Lagos. All of them a day. I is Canada this morning. I, I do not have a question. I only want to applaud a superlative paper so professionally present. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> All right. Does Bamidele deal in other commodities apart from oil? Yes. 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 Sesame, ginger, gum, and rabbit can assist you with that. QBWA will be interested in collaboration with women in export what's qbwa please how can that be connected i don't know qbwa can you help me to know okay quintessential business women association okay they will you would like to collaborate with women in export okay maybe titi can help with that please contact the organizer how do we handle difference in currency how do you handle it i don't understand difference in currency that's why you you export in dollar the your buyer in China is buying is, is sell, spending yuan. You are in Nigeria. You are sell, sp uh, selling uh, spending naira, or your buyer is spending um, what's the name Japanese yen. You are in Nigeria selling naira. You use common currency like dollar, dollar, euro, or pounds is what you you have to use to mitigate that. I mean to cover that. Isaac Adereti, is your presentation in your presentation you gave us two ways of CAD. Please can you explain? on each. One of the CAD is open account, the other one is bill for collection. The CAD that is open account does not involve bank. The CAD that is bill for collection involves bank. I don't know if I've answered your question. Which one is good for business? I would prefer you do bill for collection where there is a control on document on your behalf by a bank. There is a control. So if the buyer refuses to pay, you can get your document back if it's site. And if it's, if it's tenor, you can, the bank can help you follow up on them although the bank is not obligated to pay you. Um, this is well educated and insightful. Thanks for putting it together. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Other ones are just uh, comment, appreciation. Thank you. Okay, Titi, maybe there are some in the comment box, yes. right? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to check that out, but there's a comment on, I think this is on Facebook Live. Somebody okay. said, what if you're exporting for this is from Vivian and your daily brand Shay. Okay. That what if you're exporting for the very first time? How okay. do you show how do you show track record? Fantastic. Uh -huh. You can't show track record. That's why you should use your money to do a small transaction. Use your money to do a small transaction. That's why you should use your money to do a small transaction. You if you don't use your money to do a transaction, you can't show track record. Track record is an evidence you have done it before. Another way around that is to partner with someone who have done it before. That's another way. Partner with someone. Form a partnership. So you set up a business, two directors in that business, 
One of the directors have exported successful and have evidence of that. That's another way to show it. Any other a, a question? I think the second comment I saw here on Facebook was the same vegan said, very insightful session. We would like to discuss further on exporting our products. So I think it's something we would pursue with Vivian. Yes. Um, but yes, it's something we would pursue with Vivian. But while you're at it, Abandere, thanks for answering most of these questions. If there's I, any more questions... I share the question. Uh, what is CAD? CAD is cash against document. CAD is cash against document. Cash against document. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Bande. I, 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 okay, somebody, some people are dropping questions. <laughs> Please, if you have questions, drop it now. If you have questions, drop it now so the facilitator can take everything at once and then we can round up in a bit, okay? Somebody drop the question, did you see? No, I, I, no, it, it's not a question, it's just a okay. comment, yeah. All right, thank you so very much. And while I'm still speaking, if there's any questions, it will come on. I thought I should give some quick, some quick announcements. And if anybody has questions, please, you can also put that up. First announcement is that the videos of this capacity building series are being uploaded on our website, www.pdfnigeria/rc. The RC is a resource center. www.pdfnigeria/rc. When you get there, you can filter because you can search for what you're looking for. For filtering, if you are filtering, you will see program space. You see PDF bridge and PDF C. You click PDF bridge because this program is being presented by PDF bridge. That's why you are filtering to look for the videos. You filter the program space is PDF bridge. Then the resource type is video. If you can enter those two and you search, the videos for this training will come up. Okay? Already, the one we have on market entry strategies has been uploaded, and also that of understanding export documentation has been uploaded. So if you missed any of those two, please go to www.pdfnigeria/rc and that's the resource center. Filter using the program phase PDF bridge, the resource type is video. You would have those videos up there. We also send emails to everybody that registered for this program when the series is over in another fortnight. Then, of course, Bambele talked about the network of practicing non oil exporters of Nigeria, which strongly recommend NPN, that's the acronym, the Network of Practicing Non oil Exporters of Nigeria, NPNEN, NPN. So visit npn.org slash register and you can register today on the website, www.npnen.org slash register. You'll see a form and you can register to be a member. There are different categories of membership. Um, if you really want to go into export, you know, Bambele has said a lot of things. You need to belong to a network like that. Bambele is actually one of our board members and is also one of our champions in MPN. So you see, if you're in MPN, there's so many with so much resources that you can deal with. And I'm proud to also say that mentorship will be provided as well. PDF Bridge is working with MPN very closely to design a mentorship program as well. So if you belong to an association like that, um, you're on your way to export in Nigeria to get expert advice from well experienced members. Again, the name is the Network of Practicing Non Exporters of Nigeria. The website is www.mpnen.org slash register, and that will help you to register. mpnen.org slash register. Register now. It's quite important that you do so. All right, I see that a few more questions have come up. I'm going to you see that. Yes. Which of the commodity is most lucrative? You know, I get a number of questions. When I get some of these questions, <laughs> when you say something is most lucrative, lucrative depends on a number of factors. It depends on where you are sourcing from, the price you are buying, the price someone is buying from you, your cost of shipment, and a number of other factors determine how lucrative. So I won't say you this product is more lucrative than this product. I will just tell you that if you are going to export your return typically will be between 10 and 30% on a good day. And on a very, very fantastic day, maybe something higher than 30%, depending on the exchange rate uh, that you're able to sell. Can you elaborate in order to educate more, educate more prospect, prospect exporter on understanding DP as a payment term? Okay, DP is deliver against payment. DP is deliver against payment. 
So if I'm doing a bill for collection, the document is sent from exporter to the exporter's bank in Nigeria. The exporter bank in Nigeria sends it to the importance back abroad. That importance back abroad will deliver the document to the importer and collect money immediately. When the instruction written from Nigeria to that party saying that as you deliver this document, collect money immediately, that is delivered against payment. So that means the bank will debit the account of the importer abroad while releasing the document for him. Remember the document are what he needs to clear the goods. The document are what he needs to clear the goods. So it will deliver to him and debit his account. Um, so I don't know if I've answered that question. That's Elwin. Then someone says, how do I contact you? Get across to the organizer. They will link you up with me. Um, LK says, I have, a, an, I have access to lots of agro products in other states and needed buyer. Can I have a good link? Essentially, that's not the right. You know, when you say you have, you have access, you are looking for buyer. The question, the first question to be answered is, what are the quality specification of this product? At what price will you be able to deliver it? Quality specification first. You might have those products, but the quality are not what the buyer wants. So it's not enough to have the product, it's to know the quality. So what's the quality specification? That will help us know that, okay, this is what the buyer will prefer. Can you increase the quality or get the quality of this size rather than saying you have it and you're looking for buyer? When you, if, if you have a product and the product is of the right quality and the pricing is right, the buyer will be available. I can assure you of that. You have a product, the product is of the right quality and, the quant and you have the right quality, quantity, reasonable quantity, a container to container to container, not one ton, two ton, five ton. A container typically, depending on the nature of the product, will be 10, plus, 10 ton plus, depending on the nature of the product. For sesame seeds, about 18 ton, 18, 19 ton. For uh, cashews, about 17 ton. If you are doing regular manufactured goods, it varies depending on the nature of the item. If you are doing minerals, it can be up to 25 tons in a container. So the quantity must be reasonable. Then the quality in question. I think that should be, that's very important. So if you have that, then you can always get across to us. Please, Titi, can you type the website of both PDF? Okay, Titi can answer that. P web we'll five, website, we drop the okay. link for MPNEM. We've been typing it in the chat box, so go there. We've okay, been go typing it, the go to the chat. Can we get the presentation in our mailbox? The, the video is already online. Why are you looking for presentation again? You have okay. the video to listen yeah. separately again. Um, can you thank you so much for the training? Can we call or contact you if if I would like to join the academy? Yes, you can reach me through TT. If you get across to the organizer, you can get you can get me through them. Uh, how can we join the academy? I mean, we have a diploma program, next percent management that you can join. If you go get across to the organizer, they will link you up with me. Moment.org slash register. Which one is this? This is an advert. Oh. <laughs> moment.org which one is moment.org I love to empnem but found out we require to pay money for membership yes you yes. pay money for membership but it's, I'm not sure it's something more but you pay money for membership you know it's a private organization it's not a government organization so you also have to pay salary of the of the employee <laughs> alright I think I'm done Okay, is that, is that all for now? So let me just repeat again a couple of things. Ramdele, you've done very well. Everybody seems to be loving your session the way I have loved it too. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me check my Facebook page if there's any other comments. Okay, I think we've addressed the two comments in the Facebook page. Um, for those that are looking for the, the links, we've sent that to you on the chat room. Please pick that up very quickly because once the room is closed you may not find it there anymore and we've told you that the MPN website the mpnen.org www.mpnen.org then slash register if you want to register now it's like Bambili has said it's a of course it's a subscribed network so you pay for subscription and if you go there I'm sure you've seen that you have different categories if you go to resources on MPN you're going to find some forms and some membership categories. Just take time to look through what you see on the MPN website. We'll appreciate 
that. Um, what else? The PDF Bridge website as well. For those that ask for the documents and for the presentation is right there. The last two sessions, market entry strategies and understanding export documentation is now on that website. Go to PDF Nigeria slash RC. On that site, filter, there's a, on the left side, you will see filter. Two things I help you get there. Filter using under the program face. The program face is PDF Bridge. And under the resource type, it's video. If you have those two sets and you click to search, the two videos will come up. The two videos. And I guess by the next, by next week as well, this video would also be up for you to have. Totally at the end of the entire series, we're going to send emails to everyone that participated with some further information. Let me also say here that there's one more session to go. It's a four part series. So the next session will be on export branding. It will be on branding and packaging. I believe that some of us are excited about that. I am excited about that. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Branding and packaging. That will be the last session in the series. And that will be taken on the 30th of September. That's in a fortnight. You don't want to miss it. Because some of the issues we have with export is actually the packaging. So it's important that you don't miss it. And we're also bringing in an expert to take us through that session. So on this note, I want to thank everyone that made it to this program today. And I'm thankful that we all, the feedback shows that we, we had a great time. Can you see the polls, please? So yes. So we're going to launch a poll. We're going to launch a poll. Is Nana there, please? Can you launch a poll? We need to launch a poll now, and that will be where we would... Okay, so we want you to take part in this poll right now. We need your feedback. Can we, can we do that quickly? Let's launch... Let's There'll be a poll on your screen. Please answer the question. It's just uh, about 20 seconds or 20 seconds. Let's do this. Nobody has voted yet. Can you see the poll on your screen? If you can see the poll, please click and answer the question. We have five questions, I suppose. We have seven questions. Let's do this very quickly in the next two minutes. Let's do this. We have 64% voted. We are getting to 100%. So let's do this. If you haven't answered the question, please do this quickly. We are waiting for you. We have some for six percent voted. We still have 32 to 22 to go. If you haven't answered the question, please do so quickly.
we have 10% more, 10% yet to vote or yet to answer the question. We're waiting for you. All right, I think we have 100% voted. So thank you very much. Um, I left an email in the chat room. If you have any inquiry, please, you can email titilope underscore ojo at dai.com. If you have any inquiry, I know some of us have inquiries. You can shoot us an email and we will answer that. All right, so for as many as will be registered with MPN, thank you so much. So on this note, I want to say thank you once again. The Export Capacity Building Series has been brought to you by the Trade Policy Work Stream of the Policy Development Facility Program of UKA. Please join us in another fortnight. That's on the 30th of September as we take you through branding and packaging for export. Please don't miss it. Share this with your friends. Let them join this session. We hope to have a beautiful finale on the 30th of September. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. And see you in another fortnight. Thank you. Thank you, Bambini. You were awesome today. Thank you. <laughs>